what's now become central to this entire discussion is energy security. Uh, and when it comes to energy security, most countries are trying to have a control on the supply chain. If you don't have control on your supply chain, then you can be just nipped off the bud. My name is Dipesh Nanda. I'm the MD and CEO of Tata Power Renewable Energy Limited. So Tata Power has three clusters. We are in the distribution business of electricity. We distribute power to all of Mumbai, to Delhi. We also do a large tail called Orisa. We are also in the conventional business of thermal and hydro. And the business that I run is the Tata Power Renewable Energy business. Within this, we have 6,000 megawatts of operating capacity of wind, solar, hybrid power plants. We are constructing another 6,000 as we speak. We have our own EPC company that builds these plants. We have enough capacity to build plants for others as well. We are into manufacturing. We manufacture solar cells and modules. We have a five gigawatt plant operational in India. We also do industrial power in the sense that we offer RE power to industries to help them go green. There's another fascinating program that the Indian government has launched called the Rooftop Solar Program. And we are at the leading edge of that program as well. And finally, we are in the EV charging infrastructure business, the largest company that offers EV charging solutions in India. So these six businesses put together is Tata Power Renewable Energy Limited. So the Tata Group in India has embarked on a program called Alingana. This is a Sanskrit word that stands for embrace. And what we're doing is that we have set a target for ourselves to go net zero by the year 2045. While the country on uh, its entirety has pledged to install 500 gigawatt of RE power by 2030. The companies like Tata Power, for example, are playing a role in helping large industrials like, like steel, automotive, pharma, and so on to help them go green. So the Indian government since 2014 has been at the forefront of working with the industry to facilitate this transition. One policy is the open access policy. So the open access policy means that you don't need to co-locate your power plant for your own industrial consumption. It could be located at the best RE resource place, and then you could use the grid to transmit power to the consumption point. Now, the government has also waived charges up to a certain point uh, to facilitate the adoption of open access green energy policy. The other is something called the group captive policy. So in the group captive policy, what happens is that the industry that wants to go green makes an investment of up to 26% in a joint venture model with the RE developer, in this case, say Tata Power, for example, and also commits to offtake 51% of the electricity. Under this model, there is a waiver offered by the state in terms of a few charges, like the cross-subsidy charge, for example, making it economical for these industries to go green. At the end of the day, we've been able to underwrite and sign up contracts where we guarantee a minimum saving from the current grid price. And the saving is in the tune of 20 to 30% at times. So again, this makes it attractive through a policy framework of the Indian government to help industries go green. Going green is not only for the moral aspects of going green, but also the cost of electricity. The cost of electricity has come down substantially. And with the advent of complex solutions of adding wind with solar and battery storage and pumped hydro, I think the ability to replace the thermal electron one-on-one -on -one is here and now at a cost which is lower than thermal electricity. I was invited by HVS to come here and, and to be a part of this fantastic gathering. The topic is very contemporary and it's very close to what we do in, in India. Uh, and the topic is on climate policy strategies. So I think it's a bunch of policy advocacy that has to take shape, including things like technology and then deployment on the ground. Uh, I couldn't have found a better platform to ally my fears, to learn from each other and to develop a network where we kind of draw synergy uh, and then try and drive a point of view on how the world can you know, accelerate the energy transition uh, equation because there's so much that's against energy transition right now that a forum like this, it kind of gives you an opportunity uh, to bounce up a few ideas uh, and then go back enriched. Um, you know, and th that's, that's one big purpose that I took the time to come out here.